So today we are reading Shri Shri Radha Rata Sudhanti, verse 75. Oh Shri Radhe. Baba. May the softness of your golden body, the sweetness of your smile, the wideness of your eyes, the volume of your breast, the thinness of your waist, the slowness of your step, the wideness of your hip, the crookedness of your eyebrows, the redness of your cherry lips, and the numbness of your rasika heart be manifest in my meditation. We read one together. O Shirade, May the softness of your golden body, the sweetness of your smile, the wideness of your eyes, the volume of your breast, the thinness of your waist, the slowness of your steps, the wideness of your hips, the crookedness of your eyebrows, the redness of your cherry lips, and the numbness of your rastika heart be manifest in my meditation. So Radhe, we can see here how important is Radhika's sweetness. And Prabhupada Saraswati wants to meditate on Radhika's different kind of sweetness. In this verse, he is mentioning ten kinds of sweetness. Her softness, her sweetness, wideness of the eyes and hips, volume of her breast, thinness of her waist, slowness, crookedness of her eyes, and this numbness when the hearts stop out of intense emotions. He is mentioning here ten kinds of sweetness And he is praying to meditate on this kind of sweetness of Srimati Radharani. But also he is giving us sadhakas direction for our bhajan. How to meditate on Radharani and how to relish her sweetness, at least a little bit. He is giving this short description about Radhika's form. And each of this sweetness is in a close connection with different kinds of lila. 
Radhika is a sweet, but when she is engaged in amorous pastimes, in amorous lila with Mohan, then her sweetness is increasing, increasing, increasing more and more. So, whichever quality Radhika possess is deeply connected with her pure love and also with amorous pastimes. And Prabhupada Saraswati here is giving us mercy, explaining to us who is Radhika, to know her better and to relish her qualities, her form, her name, and ultimately her lilas. This is very important. Because if we want to approach Radharani, we should know who is she. And Prabhupada Saraswati here, like in the mood of Radhika's maidservant, is explaining Radhika's sweetness. Because he knows everyone who wants to be close to Radharani and to serve Radharani, he has to relish her sweetness. Relishing the sweetness is actually complete realization. We can sing the name. We can meditate on the lilas. But relishing the sweetness is the essence of all bhajan. At least a little bit. At least a little bit. One drop of sweetness is much more valuable than all knowledge which is presented in all books. Ultimate goal of devotees who wants to become Radharani's maidservants is to relish the sweetness and beauty of Radhika and also her Mohan. So the sweetness is the essence of personality. Because in the Radhika sweetness is Mahabhav, which is no different between Mahabhav and Radhika's external and eternal sweetness. And because of this Mahabhav, her feelings are so sweet and also her body is also so sweet. And there is no, ultimately, there is no difference between Radhika's Mahabhava feelings, pure love, and expression of these feelings on her body. Because she is embodiment of Mahabhava. Each of this sweetness of her eyes, of her waist, of her uh, breasts, of her um, golden body, is ornament of Mahabha. So Prabhupada Saraswati, writing this book, Radha Rasha Sudhanidhi, is helping us to enter and to dive deeply and more deeply and more deeply in this nectarian ocean of Radhika's qualities or Radhika's sweetness. All qualities are focused in this one quality of loving sweetness. This kind of sweetness which Radhika possess is the flavor also. And this flavor is spreading everywhere. 
and radical sweetness are also spreading everywhere. But Sadaka has to has a goal. I want to attain loving service of my Swamini. And I want to know who is she. And I want to serve her. So this, our Gurudev so many times are saying that this Radha Rasa is perfect book to know who is Radha Rani. And in these words, it's just one of the verses who is explaining Radhika's qualities, which, which helps Sadaka to know who is Radharani. For this relishing and of Radharani's sweetness, knowledge and austerity's renunciation doesn't work, doesn't help. Knowledge is information that Radharani exists. But knowledge cannot help devoted to relish Radhika's sweetness. Knowledge can bring some information that Vrindavan is reality, ultimate reality. But knowledge cannot give devotee this opportunity to relish. This is personal thing, personal. Each devotee has to relish by his own. And how to do that? By listening to those who already relish radical sweetness. The waves of their relishing of Radharani's sweetness will splash our hearts and devotee. And devotees are begging Srimadharani, please splash my heart with your mercy in the form of your name, sweet name, sweet qualities, sweet form, and sweet lilas. Splash me with these waves. This is a very strong, sweet waves. And Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi is the ocean of Radhika's qualities. And we can see here ten waves of sweetness which this ocean possess. So, Let's I without realization, sweetness, I will never feel it. Without uh, sweet realization, I cannot feel it. Your beauty and sweetness, at that I have to realize it. Right. Without this realization, all other realizations are not complete. Beauty and sweetness. This is my swami. Radhe Radhe, Dandavat Jai Shri Radhe Jai Gurudev. You're on such an important point here, Karangaji. Can can you take us one step farther in what this? realization looks like, feels like. 
this knowledge without knowing or was it knowing without knowledge <laughs> it's what we're all seeking me too every day and now can you share a bit of your experience of this when we go to the subject when we go in deep in subject and that subject is intense in my life and only thinking for that subject then it gives real life Udavaji, yeah, well, you heard the perfect answer, perfect think, question, yes. perfect answer. Yes, I because think, everything is emotion. Yeah. And like Guru Devi say, whatever we are thinking so intensively, it will bring us realization. It will help us. And the more intense feelings we have, more sweetness will come and will enter in our heart. Sweetness mm -hmm. of Radharani. One thing also we have to see, our, this, we, why not we realize, because my, my thinking is impersonal. Oh, we are not is scattered in different places. Mm. So to, to, uh, to bring to the one place and it should be fixed and go deep with that subject, then it gets relaxed. Because it means in person, like a devotee is already a devotee, but what is the stage is like in person. Yeah, philosophy is in person. How I can realize that I do not want to go inside. I cannot be close to that. I want to keep, keep this sense, but I want to listen on it. Mm. This character, all other places, our feeling has to be concentrated on one. Is so, what is written about the beauty? Maybe we will attract with this beauty that we scattered feeling will come one point. This is the mercy of mind, and really, this is the fact. First we see the beauty, we are running for the beauty, but Mahajan catching our mind, your scattered mind will become one point to see that beauty. And you will realize that you will understand the sweetness. Radhe Radhe, Dandavats to all, Dandavats Guru Dev. The connection today is interrupting and so bad. Can someone tell this again, what Guru Diff said? I think it was so important. Thank you. If I dare, if I dare try, uh, that is, uh, sorry. The, the, um, the point is that it's not, realization is not a message. It's not a knowledge. It's not information. It's a way of it's the way that we relate to emotion, to feeling. Realization is the mood, that's why we talk about mood, about bhav. Realization is the mood that we have towards the world, towards God. There's not a content, there's not a 
book we need to read to get realization. Realization means I think that this is my subject. No way. No way. Can you hear? No. Can you hear? Is it the wrong thing still? It's yeah. very poor. The microphone needs to be closer to Gurudev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Maybe perfect. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. That's it. That's the realization we just had. Realization. When we got the realization, that is my subject. Other what is we we read it and do it is information. If I want to make my subject without realization, it will never flow. And this realization gives the feeling of sweetness. What is the sweetness for me in my life to do? What is the best thing to me? What? It becomes sweet. If not, it is a sour for me. Right or not? Yeah. Because yes. how how we can explain soft word softness? We cannot explain the word softness. We cannot explain here Radhika's slowness. How she is moving slow? How to explain? It should be relished. With perfect, feelings. perfect example, Baya. Perfect example, softness. softness. There's no inform. There's no information about softness. It's Tenderness. Just, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And this is not a gyan. <laughs> and it gyan will not help. Actually, gyana, or like Gurudev said, is a blockage which brings devotee to the impersonal way. But here we have close contacts with those personalities who are extremely person. Because they are swimming, they are diving in the sweetness of Radharani. This is the last limit of the personalism. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. That's you know, <laughs> you know, Gopinath Baya what said to me, Karanga, you know, he's our quarterback. <laughs> I don't. He's understand. the no. He's the center of the football game that he takes us for the goal. <laughs> this is the beauty of Goranga. This is the beauty of Goranga. This is the beauty of of Gora Sundara. This is all Goranga is Sundara. Gora is Sundara. They achieve, they have no any problem to feel it and explain it. Gorangi, Gurudev. Gorangi. First word in this word, words is Gorange Mradama. So, wow. Prabhupada Saraswati is celebrating, glorifying. This softness of my beloved Gorangi. So, Gopinath also here. Oh, please buy it. More deep is coming, appearing. Rasamai, please. Yeah. 
Share. Read. She read us ten kinds of sweetness. Of the five kinds of meditation, dhyana is one. Sri Jiva Goswami writes in his Krama Sandarbha, dhyana means specific meditation on a particular form and so. How sweet, tender, and effulgent is Srimati's golden body. Yes. This is instruction of Prabhupada Saraswati, and this is instruction of Ananta Das Babaji. How to practice dhyana, deep meditation. And this kind of bhajan must be done with deep attachment. And Baba and Prabhupada Saraswati in these words is helping us, sadhakas, how to develop this deep attachment by meditating on Radhika's tenderness, sweetness, and so on and so on. Because who will not be come attached if he is constantly feeling about Radharani with such tender mind, sweet mind, friendly mind. So, this dhyana is actually expression of deep attachment. It's not possible to practice dhyana, deep meditation without deep attachment. Everyone of us can has this realization. If I don't have attachment for something, for someone, or for something, I cannot be deeply absorbed in this person or that stuff. But when I have attachment, then automatically I am practicing dhyana. Deep attachment. Even in the bus, even in the taxi, even in the streets, I am always deeply attached in all circumstances for my beloved. And this is the nature of bhakti, nature of love. Who is in love, he automatically is in deep meditation. No force. And how to be in love? <laughs> like Gurudev said, I want to put all my endeavor, all my emotions, everything in that focus. Because I want to be in love. If I don't want to be in love, then I will ignore and come in the stage of impersonalism. But I want to be in love and I don't care what everyone around me is saying. He is full because he is in love. Yes, I want to be full in love. This is my goal. And this is devotee who is trying, who, who didn't realize, who didn't attain direct darshan. Dhyana is not the level for devotee who attained direct darshan. Prema is the level. But Prabhupada Saraswati, our beloved Gurudev, 
all our acharyas are teaching us how to be attached. First, attach. Because through this attachment, feelings will become more intense and automatically bhajan will be deeper. So thinking about tenderness, sweetness, what is more softness of all Radharani's appearance is something which is helping Sadaka to develop attachment, strong, strong attachment, not attraction, attachment. I remember one time Gurudev said to me and a few other devotees, attraction is not enough. You need attachment. Attraction is just the first step. But then you have to open your heart and develop by the mercy attachment. So I said something about dhyana. <laughs> Deep meditation. Dhyana means specific meditation on a particular form and so. Specific meditation. It means spe from specific angle, from specific bar. Specific meditation means specific, exclusive bhava. If I'm mixing in myself this bhava, that bhava, this bhava, that bhava, then there is no one pointness. Specific meditation, it means that I'm specifically attached to the object of my feeling and thinking in the mood of Manjari Bhav. This is specific meditation. Sorry. How sweet, tender and effulgent is Srimati's golden body. Tenderness is one of the physical qualities. Ujvalani Lamani Age, form, elegance, beauty. Abhirupata Pleasantness, sweetness, and tenderness are the physical qualities. I will stop here. It is said that in Ujjwal and Naamani, physical qualities of beloved Ishtadir. Age, form, what is it? Elegance. So, devotee who is meditating on Radharani, who is Kishori, teenage girl, 14 years old, his meditation on the Radharani is different from meditation devotee who is attached to Radharani like a small girl. Kumar. And this, coming back, specific meditation means 
I am in that mood, in this Thai Bhava, and my beloved Ishtadev is in this and that Thai Bhava, uh, in that form, sorry. So if I want to serve Radhika like a Manjari, she is Kishori, teenage girl. And all attributes of her physical body are according to her age. I don't know, maybe it sounds complicated, but it's very natural. It's because, dear, the purest love is the memory of the first time we fell in love. Wow. And that was at a young age. That was pure, that was pure love. That Potency. first time. Yeah. When I thought that all my life was that, all the world was that, and there was nothing else that had any meaning at all in the life, except for... <laughs> The twelve-year-old neighbor girl that I fell in love with when I was twelve years old. <laughs> yeah. So it's a matter of the freshness and the purity and the newness, not the purity. Sorry, the freshness and the newness. That's what's important. And it's also very connected with different kinds of lila pastimes, Udavaji. When Krishna and Radharani is exchanging love in amorous pastimes, their age has to be according to that. Kishore, Kishori. But, but when they are in love, like two kids, and, I, and they are running all around Vrinda, holding each other with the hands, then it's another bath. And they have to be, for themselves and for other devotees, small kids of seven, eight, depends, years. So each bath, each relationship, it's better to say, each relationship needs specific characteristics of the age, of the form, because Radharani in the form of Kishori, her breasts are hard, like a small girl, she has a small breast, her waist is so thinny, in her Kishori age, because in that way, her physical form is most attractive for Mohan. And so on, and so on. And tenderness of Kishori is different from the tenderness of Radhika, who is a small girl. And some devotees are very attractive in Varshane for the small Radharani and Krishna. And other devotees are attached, they are mad for Kishore Kishore. This is like a human, not but like a human. And we should put this in the proper dimension. Because the senses of Kishori Kishori are different from the senses, requirements of the senses then from Kumar and Kumari.
and so on. And so on. Maybe Gurudev can add something. Mother Jasoda's pastime is more important. And in young age, Manjari is important. You will never see any past time of other than Manjari, only in Kumar and Kumari. I always say, baby can see the dress. Lover can see the breast. So Manjaris can see the breast because they are baby of Radhika. And lovers see the breast Krishna because he is lover of Radhika. I cannot see that. Even Sakhi and Gopi cannot see get the chance to see and serve. So close, means close to the breast is a very close, very personal. And very sweetness, she wants to show her. So, how was I? What is my fixed nature? I find that thing. That Mike, please. Yeah. How is my I Sarup? I without my I Sarup, I cannot relate. And how much we want to close that different disaster of service is also there. Friend has different desire of service. Mother has different desire of care and serve, love, caring love. And Manjiri has different desire. Gopi has different desire and Sakhi has different desire. Yeah. Love is love is a way. <clears throat> love isn't a way. Uh, sorry, love is not taking pleasure. It's not like eating ice cream. When I look at you, I feel pleasure. Love is a, <clears throat> a change in our way of, of being in the world. It changes our eyes. It changes the way we see. When we understand love, since love opens our hearts, then we live in the world differently. We live in the world more softly, to take Garanga's beautiful word. We live in the world world more openly. I'm funny. Mm -hmm. Everything smells different. 
You, we know this. When we were all in love the first time at 12, well, 14 or whatever age, when we were in love, everything's more beautiful. We yeah. smell things more. We see things more. We taste things more. This is all flowing mm -hmm. from that feeling of being in love. And the purest right. one was that first, the first time. Or, so it, it's not just a, a way of receiving pleasures, like, I love you, so it's pleasurable to look at you. It's a way of existing in all the world of sensations. Right. Everything is different. Everything is divine. Can I just ask one question? Uh, Goranga Sundara, uh, you are mentioned before that uh, these pastimes are like a human. They are not human, but they are like a human. So uh, is it correct that uh, all experience from material world, like the sweetness, tenderness on material world, can help us to go deeper in the ana of the subject of Radharani? Or, or this is something completely different? Gurudev can answer this. Like a human, human, human can understand. Is like a human, means human can understand. Only animals will not understand. Like a human means like this. Like <coughs> you have some experience. Like that, this is happening also. If you have a really pure love with someone, then you don't want to be interested in other subjects. Give and take. It's like a human is happening. That is, that is purity. And if you want to make him pure, you can make him pure also. He's all like a human. This is the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He 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 come to to Vrindavan Brajalila like a human that I am not a godly that you will not understand that he live good that you understand I understand everyone can understand that but he is a divine at the same time he is a like a human. But he is a div divine. At the same time, they are not conditioned like us. <clears throat> Without Saru, we cannot feel it and realize it. But for feeling like a human. Mahaprabhu, he connects the dots between the love we feel and the divine love. And the compass on that path is Guru. The navigator on this path from these feelings I have and the love of God, that is Guru.
Auto navigator is important for this. I don't work individually and I start navigating for myself. I need the navigator who has some realization in his life, in his line, anyone. If he don't realize, maybe his Param Guru is realized, they can navigate. If I not realize, my Guru Dev is realized, they will surpass me and teach us to teach to the his grandsons. Navigate about this, how to be balanced yourself. Rather, go on. Go on, Gautamba. Now, uh, I. Yeah. Go on. So, Mardava means that one cannot even tolerate the touch of something soft. In Ujjwala Nilamani, Srila Rupa Goswami gives a beautiful example of the extraordinary tenderness of Radhika's golden body. Shirupa Manjari told Shirati Manjari, Oh friend, last night Shiradika lay on a nice bed of fresh jasmine flowers. But the astonishing thing is that although the flowers have not withered even slightly, her tender body has become bruised by their touch. Aha, how sweet is Shiradika's light smile. The budding smile, <clears throat> the budding smile on her cherry lips enchants even the enchanting Mohana. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami writes Shiradika's nose. Is like Cupid's quiver filled with arrows of sesame flowers. When her lowered face smiles, the hunter Cupid shoots his arrow from his quiver to pierce the deer of Mohana's mind. This moon-like smile brightens up the darkness of Mohana's desperate heart. Sri Pada said, If I am not so fortunate to see that sweet smile directly, then let me at least meditate on it. That is my desire. 
So this is the beauty of the prayer of Sri Pat, Prabhupada Saraswati. He is giving through his own words us direction and instruction. If I cannot, and I cannot, be directly engaged in the seva of my beloved Swamini, then at least I want to meditate her on her different kinds of sweetness. This is my consolidation. This kind of deep meditation will suit my hankering heart, burning heart. I cannot be. Anyway, it depends on her. But at least I pray that she gives me the mercy that I can meditate on her, Diana, deep meditation. And we can see here from these few examples how this human-like form of Radhika is helping us to really understand and feel, touch with our feelings, senses, through our ears. how she is really sweet and beautiful. And you can see here that tenderness, Baba is giving theoretical example, uh, explanation. Tenderness means that one cannot even tolerate the touch of something soft. This is a theory. Yeah, knowledge. And now Rupa Goswami is giving human-like example of Shimati Radhika, that everyone can relate with this. And everyone can understand how, why, because he feels that. How Radhika's tender body is not damaging the flowers on the bed, but her tender body is so special that these petals of the flowers are bruising her body. So we can immediately see here this explanation what is tenderness and in pastime, in real situation, we can experience and get some realization and immediately some feeling of amazement will appear in the heart say so, wow she is lying on the bed of flowers and flowers are not damaged but her sweet golden tender body has some scratches some bruises Everyone can relate with that, because it's human-like. I just want to say this, because then it is Guru that inspired me. And I cannot be there, but I can deeply meditate and hanker for that goal to be there. So this is the teaching of this specific verse. Other verses are teaching other things, but this specific verse is teaching, I cannot be there directly, but I'm hankering to deeply meditate. Yes,
of all the limbs. The eyes are the most beautiful. Shiradika's wide eyes are even more fickle than the wagtail birds. One of the 108 names Shilaras Raghunadas Goswami gives to Shiradika is Saubhagya Kajalankara Netra Nindita Kanjana. Her eyes that defeat the wagtail in fickleness are anointed with the eyeliner of good fortune. Shilaravana Das also said in Vivlapakusumanjali, even the slightest movement of your wide eye that defeats the wagtail birds tightly binds up the Krishna elephant. When can I be so fortunate to fully worship these eyes by anointing them with eyeliner? Eyes. Blue, sweet eyes of our sweet, tender Swamini. And everyone who has some little feelings for Radharani can immediately visualize just little. Because it's human like blue sweet eyes of Shimataradra, who are always restless, pickle, and these eyes are constantly talking, expressing her emotions. I was very curious, actually, about this bird, vectail bird. And I tried to find which kind of bird it is. And one of the main characteristics of this bird is that this bird is always blinking. It's blinking. It's not always that only that her eyes are restless left and right, up and down, but they are constantly blinking. And her eyes, Radhika's eyes, in some specific intimate situations with Mohan, are also always blinking, giving different signs talking through this blinking like this Morse, <laughs> you know. She asking help from Manjaris in situation when Mohan is completely fainted. Save us, save this situation by blinking. And more and so on and so on ab about Radhika's blue eyes sweet blue eyes. So just to meditate on this detail is diving in the ocean of Mahabhav. Whatever you want to say. Sripada says, May the big breast of Shirada be visible in my meditation. 
Giridhari has no problem in carrying the vast Govardhana hill on his left little finger. But as soon as his eyes fall on Shiradika's breast, his hands begin to shiver and perspire. The cowherders don't understand. They think that Giridhari is becoming tired of lifting the hill and they try to help him to keep it raised. Only the Sakis and Manjaris know the greatness of these breasts. Others cannot. Others cannot. The sweetness of Radhika's breasts knows only Sakis and Manjaris and also her lover. And we can see here Shri Pat, someone who is always near the lotus feet, Pat of Shri Radhika, is relishing these big breasts which is giving so much mercy to her manjaris and her daughter. And it, for me, it's always interesting that who was Sripad before? He, would great, he was great Vedantist, Lakshmi Narayan, worshipper, devotee. And can you imagine that this kind of person who is full of knowledge, renunciation, example of charya of renunciation, is meditating on the breasts. So this is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By Gora Kripa, he changed his heart, behavior, Love. and now is diving in the sweetness of Radhika's breast and praying, I want more to be absorbed. So we can see here superiority of pure Keval Bhakti under the knowledge rituals, austerities, jnana, vairagya, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, I just make this discretion <laughs> because it glorifies bhakti through living example of Sri Pad. Sri Pada said, May the thinness of Radhika's waist be visible in my meditation. Her waist is as thin as that of a lion and can be held even with the fist. The loving maid servant can have the best view of that thin waist that carries a heavy burden to breast and topples a vast area, the buttocks also. When Radhika walks, the maid servants are afraid that her waist will break because of this unproportional situation. So they hold her waist. Mm -hmm. 
Let me meditate on Radhika's steps that are slow. <coughs> Sorry. Let me meditate on Radhika's steps that are slower even than that of an elephant. Even Sri Krishna who also walks as slow as an elephant, is enchanted by Radhika's gait. I want to meditate on Sri Radhika's wide buttocks. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj right. Aren't the words of the poet who says that Radhika's buttocks are like the bank of the Yamuna true? Surely they are. Her braid is like the Yamuna and her sash of bells sings like the swans that swim in the Yamuna. If not, then why would Krishna's mind, the best dancer, or his mind's girlfriend, dancing girls of his desires, always dance the rasa there without ever resting? Mm. Shiradika's eyebrows are crooked and they cast arrow-like glances that enchant even Mohana, the transcendental youthful Cupid of Vrindavan. How many emotions she reveals with the trembling of her eyebrows. Govinda Dasa sings, wherever the subtle trembling of her glances are manifest, there waves of emotion arise, like so many waves of the Yamuna. Sripada wants to meditate on these sweetly knitted eyebrows. Shiradika's lips are as sweet as red bimba cherries, and even Mohana is enchanted when he sees them. How could Mohana be so enchanted by them unless the red luster represents her passionate love for him? Sripada desires to meditate on these ruddy lips. Finally, Sri Pada said, I also want to experience the numbness of Radhika's heart. Loving Radhika is always numb out of ecstatic love for Mohan. Nothing of this will remain hidden for the sensitive maidservant. Let this numbness of your heart 
be manifest in my meditations. Shri Pada prays. Shri Pada prays and giving us instructions through his prayers. How slowly, lightly, on an easy manner to meditate on each of these Radhika's ornaments, sweet ornaments. He is doing this. He is practicing this. He is praying to practice deeper and he is giving us instruction, guidance, also how to meditate on these details of Radharani's different ornaments of her bodily feature. So mind who is full in passion cannot do it. Mind who is full in tanogun, ignorance, cannot do it. But if devotee is eager, then he will receive the kripa, sufficient kripa, that his mind become calm and peaceful, soft and tender, and in that way absorb radical softness and tenderness, reddish lips, pickleness of the eyes. It's not necessary. This, this purport is showing that it's not necessary to meditate in all lilas, what's going on, what's happened, and so on. No. Just focus your heart and mind on one small detail, and this small detail will open all secrets and become ocean for sadhaka. Because in meditation of just, I don't know, lips of Radhika, so many lilas will open. So many lilas are in connection with this eyeliner around the Radhika's blue eyes. This is at least how I understand and how I'm trying to practice. I'm sorry if I make mistakes. I'm saying something wrong, but... About the, for, you, never, for, you never make a mistake, my dear. But can I, can I add something, maybe? Yes, of course. So Just many more. things can be. I feel uh, for a long time... In, we, Westerners have difficult, and I mean Japanese Westerners too, Westerners have difficult to understand this uh, description of woman. In the age of modern feminism and, and, uh, and uh, Republican respect and all, it's, it's complicated to understand. So I think it's really if you add one little key to everything you said, which was correct, and that is what we're meditating on is what love is, and in particular, divine love, Pim. Radhika's body is Pim. This is a very weird idea, but if we can grasp that a little bit, then we can understand that all these sensual descriptions of Radhika's bodies, body are descriptions of the different characters of love. There where her body is described as fragile, we understand love to be fragile. There where we understand her body is uh, soft and inviting, then we understand love to be soft and inviting. And there, where her body is described as hard or resistant, then that's what we understand love to be. 
And this numbness you just finished with, or the verse finishes with, is also our reaction to, to love. So I don't know if you agree with me. I don't know if Gurudev agrees with me. I go out and I do, I say many silly things. But, but I think if we meditate these leelas of, which are very, uh, physical in their description, we meditate these leelas as the topography of love, descriptions of perfect love, the softness, the hardness, the depth, the rejection, the, the attraction, then we can better understand these leelas. And I'm, I'm not sure I'm, this, this is how I understand. But I'm, Thank you, Doge. For this reason, Baba in so many, and Gurudev in so many places in commentaries are saying that this is for sensitive devotees. And sensitive devotees, when they say sensitive, it doesn't mean what we think sensitive. When we are thinking sensitive, I think on my senses or my material emotions. But the Acharyas are never thinking like this. They are says a sensitive devotee means devotee who is starting, anyway, starting to awake his spiritual identity. And through his own sweetness, he is relishing the sweetness of Shimatarada. Because the spiritual identity, Swarup, shortly to say, is Bhava Deha, made of Bhavas. Made not from the bones, blood, tears, flesh, flesh, no emotions, and this is completely explosion in our mm. materialistic mind. That yeah. there, but example is uh, we we heard so many times about this subtle body. Isn't it? Subtle body. So it means that another body which is not so gross it also exists. And imprisoning the soul. Mm. So only Bhava Deha, pure emotional body, which soul receives like a wish, like a covering, is re his real identity. And yes. through this identity, we should mm -hmm. always think and listen, not from this physical. We are using this physical like a tool, but not identifying ourselves. Not Goranga is mm -hmm. relishing the sweetness. No, he's useless. He's the body. But I have to pray for the mercy to feel through my spiritual identity. Then realization can be complete. Mm. And someone who is on the physical platform, even in a subtle physical platform, on the mind platform, cannot relish completely sweetness of a bhava deha, his own bhava deha, and also he cannot relish the complete sweetness of Mahabhava Takurani, mm. embodiment of Mahabhava Shimateradharani. This is what is so difficult for us, uh, that we are we're describing a physical form, Radhika's body, and yet we're referring to a spiritual form, yeah. to the shape of love, of divine love, Prem. It requires shift of consciousness. Shift of consciousness. Shift of consciousness. Complete yeah. shift. Not little. Not 10%, 20. Complete shift of consciousness. But sometimes the descriptions given to us by Ananta Das Babaji that our dear, dear teacher, they're so uh, poetic and beautiful that this beauty, this poetry helps us to make that shift. 
and this is the way how rasa should be mm. distributed through poetic words that mm. why poetic words because poetic words are touching tender mind tender heart yes. and actually tender soul yeah yeah poetic words are bringing this relishment for the soul and soul becomes attached for that yeah. so not the body soul becomes a thing i want more but then the meta the practical message to us is to be more sensitive spiritually sensitive spiritually sensitive to what's going on but spiritually sensitive but also it doesn't mean that we have to cut our physical emotions but we have to properly engage them properly engage our senses feelings from the senses in devotional service <clears throat> of the swamini's senses Hrishikena Hrishikesh, serving through the senses, whose <clears throat> senses? My Thakurji's senses. They are persons, they have a senses. And we want to please them. How to please them? To please their senses with our spiritual senses. We cannot please them with our gross material senses. With our spiritual senses, we are trying to learn and approach and serve their spiritual, transcendental, pure, loving senses. Mm. Radhika is giving pleasure to Krishna's senses. Spiritual senses. And it, spiritual sense. Yeah, he is a spiritual person. <laughs> But what's, what's beautiful, uh, what's so wonderful about this whole picture is that we jivas already possess the love. We are, there's nothing, there's nothing that we need to buy at the love store or, you know, acquire as a gift. We already have it. We only need to understand it, yes. realize it. Mm. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. In the soul is already Krishna Prem. Prem is already in the soul. But w we have a problem with covering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a problem with the love. We have a problem with the coverings. And purification, Cheto Darpana Marjana, means that we yeah. have to remove everything what is not a love. Mm. And that's a love. This is not. Yeah. And only love should stay. We have to remove anartas. What is anartas? What is not valuable? Everything what is not love is not valuable. Yeah. We should remove everything what is not love, pure love. And for that we need the Krishna. But we should know the goal. We have to have a fixed goal, what we really want. And then pray to the persons who can help us. Yeah. But if we are not clear with the goal, our play prayers are also not clear. It's always and, twisting. And you know what's nice is that the persons who can help us, they already wanted to help us. They're already helping us if we say yes to them. Yes. You want to help your students, isn't it? You are open to help your students. Mm. And if someone wants your help he will show it on his physical appearance in his mental emotional uh, appearance and uh, you will see you will feel it that he wants to learn from you and you are very willing to give him and give him and give him but if he is just, but if he's uh, one moment if he's just sitting in front of you, like a ritual, I have to appear in the class of my professor. You feel it. You are giving, but you see 
covering. Mm. It's, and this is why bhakti is so natural, <laughs> like yeah, a human, yeah. like a human. It's like breathing oxygen. It's the yeah. Uh, someone, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 I'm ja sam kao, mislim, svi smo kao djeca bili bliže toj premiji, osjećali tu ljepotu i slatkoću u mnogim stvarima i onda se to prekrilo, kao da smo dobili žuticu. I sad ta slatkoća ponovo ta nas na neki način dječi jer je sad zgusnuta, ali koliko sada <laughs> možemo bez sva rupe to primiti i koliko je to sad ljek koji, nam poma- koji, koji ćemo ovaj probaviti. <laughs> Evo, ako možeš to. Ok, I, I will try to translate what our Vrinda from Croatia oh. said, and I hope that I will translate properly. Please correct me, Vrinda. Oh, uh, she, she is saying that uh, when we have been kids, we had, we already had this kind of love in ourselves. But during the time, all these coverings came on us. So, in that way, it's not possible. Uh, sorry, he, uh, she said then, then only medicine is to relish this sweetness. And she is saying and concluding that this sweetness can be relished only in Swarupa. And she asked, is it okay? And I, I answered to her, yeah. This transcendental sweetness can be relished only through transcendental sweet Swarup body. And we are very fortunate that Radhika sent us our beloved Guru Manjari and through her sent us possibilities to receive but also, but always this but, we should practice this. And what does it mean to practice? To merge with these spiritual senses. To change this physical bodily identity and identify ourselves like a Radhika's Mancharis. This is the most important thing, and this is the Raga Nuga practice, under the guidance of devotees who are already attained perfection. Swarup, Swarup, Swarup. Staiba, Staiba, Staiba. But don't, <clears throat> then, for those of us who are not uh, arrived at perfection, can't we use these feelings and memories that Vrinda is talking about to guide us towards our goal, to inspire us and to energize us? Of course, we don't have before, any other Before tools. we arrived at perfection. We don't have any other tool. No. We have our mind, we have our senses, we have our God-given intelligence. We have some experience, life experience, and we need intelligence to properly apply in our sadhana. How to attain spiritual body how to identify us with spirit above. So Gurudev many times is speaking, we have to be attached because we need realization what does it mean to be attached. Mm. And then when we make a switch of consciousness with the experience of attachment, we just direct our consciousness in another goal, in another goal of attachment. 
but we have experience. Mm. Let me tell you one short story, Mayur Dawaji. Thank you so much that you are sharing <laughs> these things. There is one story of one in South India, long time, long, long, long time ago. It was one very wealthy person. I don't know, king, prince, or merchant, very wealthy person. And uh, he was in love with one beautiful lady. And uh, it's happened like this, that he was going through Main Street, bringing her on this chariot, palanquin, you know, when the ladies in Japan are, the ladies are inside and the people are strong, men are bringing her. And this person was running after this chariot, crying, singing, dancing in completely ecstasy completely crazy, intoxicated with love for that woman. And it's happened that one sadhu was there. And sadhu approached to this man in love. And he said, why do you love this woman? And immediately he said, because she has such a beautiful eyes. I cannot stop. Look at her eyes. <laughs> and Sadhu said, okay, I understand you. What will happen if I'll show you more beautiful eyes? And then this man said, of course, I will love this person who has more beautiful eyes. But I'm not sure that this kind of person exists at all. And Sadhu told him, no, no, come with me. I will show you the more beautiful eyes and most beautiful eyes. And person, this man, said, okay, I will follow you. And Sadhu took him for the head, hands, and bring him in the temple, where deities were present, yeah. this, and bring this person, broke, he brought this person in front of deities, gave him a mercy, and when that person saw the beautiful eyes of a Takurji, it was Lakshmi Narayan, but we can say another way. But it, when he, she's, he saw the beautiful eyes of Takurji, immediately he felt in love. Immediately he made a switch of consciousness. Because he had eagerness to see more beautiful eyes. He had good luck to meet Sadhu. And also Sadhu gave him full kripa. Remove the covering of his eyes from his heart. And ultimately he felt in love with Takurji. So in that way we can see how our experience from bodily life can help us but we need the mercy of pure devotees who will later on guide us in the proper direction and for that we need spiritual intelligence when i say spiritual intelligence it means the daddy buddhi yoga it means spiritual Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence.
then we can practice Southern Bhakti. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, time is running, but I think that we, please Rasa, may finish this Lila now, for those who already still have the patience to listen, <laughs> uh, because all these signs of sweetness of Shimati Radharam are practically now present, are present in this lila. All these signs of sweetness are present in one lila. In his Siddha Swarupa, Sripada desires this tenfold vision in another way. Once Shiradika goes out to meet Mohan at noontime with great passion, Radhika arrives at the trysting grove, while Sripada follows her like her shadow. Anxious Nayakamani, Krishna, the jewel of talent waits for her inside the kuncha. As soon as he hears the jingling of her ankle bell, he comes running out and takes Swamini into the kuncha with the greatest care and respect. While he holds her, he feels the softness of her golden body that becomes reddish because of the perking sun rays. Mohana seats Ishwari <laughs> on a bed of flowers and fans her with soft leaves or wipes her off with his yellow dot. Through Mohana, the maid servant also relishes the softness of Shimati's golden body. Swamini smiles slightly when she notices Mohana's great love for her. How wonderful, how wonderfully sweet is that smile. Mohana is enchanted and thinks, this is the greatest nectar. I have to drink this with the cups of my lips. Srimati then casts a glance at Mohana, which makes him experience the wideness of her eye. Full of desire, he places his hand on her breast so that he experiences their plumpness. Swamini pretends to be a little offended, so she gets up from bed and walks away. In this way, Mohana sees the thinness of her waist, the slowness of her steps, and the wideness of her buttock. He pulls at Swamini's dress to keep her inside the kunja, but she beats him with the trembling of her knitted eyebrows. 
How wonderful is the beauty of these eyebrows. Mohana is enchanted and forcibly drinks the nectar of Swamini's lips. In this way, the maidservant relishes the redness of Swamini's lips through Mohana. Now, the divine couple becomes overwhelmed by Cupid and they commence their love game. Mohana tightly binds Swamini in the ropes of his embrace. Rasena means with Krishna who is the flavor personified. While Krishna lovingly embraces Swamini, the maidservant experiences the numbness of her ecstatic heart. And Sripada humbly prays, O cloud bank of sweetness, O queen of the secret Nikunja, O limitlessly merciful Radhe, your golden body is a storehouse of Ratham. When will I become conscious of that in my meditation? When will I become conscious of your tender body that shines with a golden luster, your thin waist, your wide buttocks, and your big jewel-like breasts that are the limit of sweetness? O oh, Krishna's beloved, will I see your sweet, luscious smile, your reddish, cherry-like lips, your crooked eyebrows, and your beautiful, slow steps that enchant even Madana Mohana. Shiradika's heart is filled with rasa and stunned with love like a jewel. Shripad Prabodhananda said, When will I directly see that essence of the wealth of Smaran? JJ Shirati. So all these ten kinds of sweetness, Sripad was meditating individually. And then he wanted to see them all together in one place, in one lila. And here Baba is describing this lila, which is contained all these ten kinds of sweetness from Shimatarada and how this sweetness is effective on Mohan. Radhe Radhe Udavaji, thank you very much for your share Radhe. helping your poor brother. Uh, Jai Rasamayo. Dayani Diji, Vrinda, thank you for your question. There any need for your commentaries. All the devotees, rather, rather.